what the fuck am I supposed to do with this? I'm a police officer. They don't pay me enough to clean up a bunch of arm-sized fingers and Count Von Count's viscera. Welcome back, Devil Hunters. Last week, that blood devil we hired just got through making a complete scene in public. We're going to be dealing with the fines for that one, and we'll be lucky if we don't get a court summons over obstructing civilian work. I know, what a bunch of fucking whiners. Listening in on Makima berate the two newbies, Power starts to worry about losing her promotion to full-time Devil Hunter, instantly throwing Denji under the bus by claiming it was all his idea for her to jump off the roof of a skyscraper with an oversized cartoon mallet and scream at the top of her lungs. She's a little excitable. Power starts to take the claim that she's a liar kind of personally though, seems she has some history with humans yanking her chain. Yet when Makima asks her to calmly please shut the fuck up, suddenly it's crickets. Oh and she's pissed herself in fear. Hard to tell if Denji notices that or is just staring at her boobs. A little bit of A, a little bit of B. Ruminating on it some, Denji reflects how much of a dream it is for him to just be able to go to a vending machine and buy a Kalpis water in peace. That's also my dream, but I live in a country where Kalpis costs four times as much if you can find it, so fuck me, I guess. Power also staring deeply into the pretty colors has her train of no thought interrupted by a cat. Typical, they never shut the fuck up. Turns out she likes that about them, probably because she never shuts the fuck up and tells Denji humans suck and cats don't criticize her for things like murder. I guess that means she wasn't thinking about eating that cat in the last episode. She's not in love with her fellow devils either though. One of them took her specific cat, Meowy. In fact, this is her current life goal, getting Meowy back, but she's not exactly working under Makima by choice. Likely the whole threatening death upon her thing if she doesn't do as she's told. She'll do anything to get Meowie back. Well, that's just fucking stupid. Denji doesn't even have a cat for a heart. Who would go out of their way for- wait, wait a minute, did you say anything? Like anything, anything? Like I can grab your tits, anything? That motherfucker better think twice before grabbing any more pussy in this town, because I'm a devil hunter and I won't stand for it. So we're talking both or just one tip. I love the music kicking up and Power's shock and gradually emphatic agreement with Denji's U-turn attitude. She's going ah for her realization and after Information in Japanese, but I do want to say I always like the manga's translation of just, yeah, yeah! On their way, Denji tries to empathize with Power about how he can't pet his dog anymore either, but it's okay, he lives on in his heart. Obviously, he means this more literally than Power realizes as she tells him she's an atheist and there's no such thing as heaven, idiot! Your dog's dead! Denji holds his tongue for reasons. Their discomfort and difficulty understanding each other is framed perfectly by their choice in seating despite nobody else being aboard the train. Meanwhile, Makima is talking with with the government higher-ups about their concerns that foreign nations are going to form contracts with the likes of the White Phosphorus Devil, and that she should really hurry along with developing some top-notch devil-killing machines to mitigate the international tension and reduce the threat that devils pose to their security. Aki, Malding, is like Makima, what's so great about this Denji fuckwood anyway? You got me around, sword guy, what do we need him for anyway? Makima explains that devils are representative of individual things or concepts, and that each one holds more power the more their name is something others fear. A coffee devil, she muses ain't shit. Power, the blood fiend, isn't nothing to fuck with, but not the biggest hotshot in town either. Only people that really fear her are those whose vasovagal response to looking at somebody's leaking cut causes them to pass out. Denji is the chainsaw devil, which she finds pretty interesting, but actually this line of reasoning is starting to fall apart on the surface. I can't name a single person whose number one fear is chainsaws. Well, it's probably definitely not important. Aki proceeds to label Denji all kinds of shit that he thinks makes Denji too different to be useful, but if he listened to himself, he'd realize that having all these quirky traits is only additive to figuring out if Denji's novel approach offers something interesting. He's not in it for revenge, and maybe that sort of one-track thinking is exactly why you're not the boss, Aki. Alright, we're here, this lovely shack out in the middle of a highly isolated field where nobody would ever think to look for a corpse. Good thing nobody's being set up right now. <laughs> Honestly, horror movie shot of Power just dragging him into the doorway, blood trailing the whole way in, and her disappearing into the darkness is just so fucking amazing. Hard to follow up, but they sure fucking do. Look at his glowing eyes, the music slowly becoming more intense. I adore everything about this. Also, his calm, beastly demeanor and smooth voice is unsettling, but like, like ASMR. Holy shit. A human took this Hulk's arm off? Must have been one hell of a person. It's the Bat Devil, and he really, really likes him a tall, steamy glass of blood. It'll also make his arm come back. Too bad Denji's blood apparently tastes like manure. Guy's entire upbringing was sustained by bread crusts. He's not going to be a delicacy, I suppose. While Power calls Denji stupid for believing her story, Bat Devil bats around the idea of eating children, or maybe virgins. I'm not sure which one tastes better. Man's really a gourmet. Children, pregnant woman, he only wants the purest blood. Only devil more fixated on eating children specifically is the child predator devil, who, given the nature of this comic, I wouldn't be terribly surprised to find as a real character. And for the love of God, do not make a contract with them. Anyway, weird direction. 
I'm taking this. Bad Devil calls Power stupid for believing his story. He's going to go ahead and not release Miaoi as per their deal to help him return to full strength and instead eat him. This transitions straight into Power recalling meeting Miaoi, intending initially to eat him, but growing close as it dawns on Power that Miaoi does not bat an eye when she decapitates a cow to feed him milk. So many great scenes in this episode and we haven't even gotten to the fight yet. Seeing Power as a lonely, dirty, homeless fiend who slowly begins to like another living thing for the first time is done with such emotional impact in this moment. It puts into perspective how similar Denji and Power are, both coming from nothing, alone save for their loyal animals. A devil and her mortal cat, a mortal and his devil dog. These two are totally ignorant to just how much they actually do understand each other, how much it doesn't change a thing that they're devil and human. And just as Miaoi is swallowed, Power looks at a paralyzed Denji and tells him she gets how he feels about Pochita now. It feels bad to get it. And then Bat Devil eats her. Jesus man, give them a moment. But he doesn't have a moment. He's got bitches to fuck and child blood to gargle. That's what he says. He says all that. It clicks with Denji now too. He remembers thinking Pochita was missing once. Power must have felt that way knowing Bat Devil had Miaoi this whole time. Both Power and Denji sharing their first moments of empathy for another humanoid basically. Now he's gonna help her. And it's definitely, definitely not just because if he doesn't, he won't get to touch boobs. The music for the flashbacks is so cool by the way. It's like playing in reverse for some parts because we're going back to the past. It's hard to describe. But the music for when the chainsaws come out, like a rapid heartbeat kicking on, that's fucking metal. And the music here, when they crash through the building, it jitters like the sputtering of his chainsaws. Fuck man. So much weight in the Bat Devil's attacks and falls. Denji's really getting the hang of moving fast to outpace these big stupid devils. And he's being a hero during all this wicked cool shit, telling civilians to get the fuck away. Well, you love humans so much, chainsaw devil. Maybe save this man in a car. How about that, asshole? Denji's not one to be told what his morals are, just doing what he wants it seems. And then Bat Devil makes some funny noises while his head's on fire before transitioning into turning his face inside out and using echolocation to blow his scream so hard it physically creates a cannon. The sound, a beautiful fusion of explosion and high-pitched ear ringing slash bat screeching. Before Bat gets a chance to eat Car Guy, Denji is shown to have been rather undeterred by the assault. And as Batman Devil stares deeply into the spinning blades on Denji's arms, the realization of what he's up against in fear starts to set in. He loses composure. Chuck's asphalt. Just get the fuck away from me, you freak. In his pre-dying moments, Bat looks like a gremlin's Halloween mask. And then the real dying, and then hero pose. My pants are wet. Outro review. Please stop being this cool. Easily the best outro so far, featuring Maximum the Hormones 200 million centimeter long blades, a band you'll certainly remember if you like the Death Note anime. But visually, this outro has it fucking all. They just pulled color palettes from the Tonkabon cover arts at points. I want the whole fucking anime to look like this. This is exactly what I want with the wild clashing colors and the harsh, scratchy line work. It's just constantly changing stylistically every moment. Trippy, painted, pretty. I can only handle so much. This is everything I wanted, and the fact that they've at least acknowledged this over-the-top direction, even if it couldn't be the whole show, still feels euphoric. I'd be absolutely fucking blown back if I was more enamored by any outro after this one, but I'll keep my options open. Oh, you're still here. Sorry, I'm just gushing at this point. Pretty chaotic day at the office today, huh? Go home. I think you're overtime. I'll see you again next week at the public safety office.